Back in 2011, I was living in Malaysia and I was living in my own house. I had a friend come over from Canada and we were just having a housewarming party when I was upstairs showing my friends my new house and my best friend, she was downstairs with my dog. Suddenly I heard a loud bang and my dog yelped. And I thought she just knocked something over because she's a bit crazy anyway. When I went downstairs, my best friend looked absolutely shocked. She was so pale and white. I asked her what happened and she said my dog was walking towards the glass sliding door and it slammed shut by itself in front of her. And we freaked out. We so freaked out. We left, we shut the doors, we're like, let's go out. We came back later and had forgotten sort of all about it. My friend left, went back to Canada, um, and I continued living there. Over the next couple of months, some strange things were happening in the house, but I could just give them an excuse, you know. Um, I would come home and something I had left there was now over there. Um, and I just said, okay, well, maybe I forgot. Or I would hear something drop in my room and nothing had moved. After probably about four months, um, I came home one night. I went to my bedroom. I put my dog in her bedroom. I went to my bedroom, started to get ready for bed. And I noticed the light was on outside of my bedroom. So I went outside to turn it off. And when I did, I felt this feeling in my chest and I'd, I'd had this feeling before because I was an atheist. I, I, I would have said like, maybe it's a ghost, <laughs> but, um, I felt this feeling and I heard a noise that sounded like white noise. And I got really scared because I didn't, I didn't really know where it was coming from, but I sensed where it was coming from. I could feel like the direction that it was coming from. So I just shut off the light and I shut my bedroom door and I locked it. And when I turned around, something hit my door so hard. The whole door shook and my heart literally fell out of my chest. Like I was terrified. I'd been in situations where I thought I might die <laughs> before, but I never sought refuge in a God because I didn't believe in any God. But in that moment, my mind was completely clear. And the only word in my mind was Allah. So against my natural judgment, I said to myself, Allah, if you're there, protect me because I don't know what this is and I don't know what it wants from me. And I went to bed and I thought that I was going to take ages to sleep because I was so scared. Um, I just put something on my laptop and I mean, within five minutes I was asleep. The next morning I woke up and I'm a pretty logical person. So what happened the night before was really logical for me. And so I sat on the side of my bed and I kind of thought about the whole situation. And I did what I guess you would call make dua. I prayed um, in a way. And I just kind of had an honest conversation. And I said, Allah, I'm 21 years old. I've been an atheist for my whole life. If you want me to be Muslim, then guide me because I'll never find my way on my own. And so after that, I really felt this pull to learn about Islam. And so I started asking people, what does Allah teach? Why do you pray? What are you afraid of? And I started to like beta test Islam in my life. So if I got taught that Allah teaches patience and Allah loves us to be patient, I would implement that in a traffic jam when I feel so impatient with the person in front of me. And the situation would get better or I would at least feel better. And I felt this like positive influence happening in my life. So um, I went to France in April for work and um, I actually stopped drinking while I was there. And this was months before I even thought about really converting. And I feel like these were baby steps that Allah was putting in my life to make it not such a big change when I finally decided to make the decision that he knew I would make eventually. So it was coming to Ramadan and I know all of my Muslim friends back then were very Muslim in Ramadan. Even if they weren't very Muslim the rest of the year in Ramadan, they practiced everything. So I said, Ramadan is a good time to see what it's like to really be a Muslim because my character is if I do something, I do it 100% or I don't do it at all. So um, I printed out a piece of paper that taught me how to pray. I wore hijab. I fasted every day. I read a chapter of Quran every day. 
And it must have been about halfway through Ramadan that, and halfway through the Quran that I realized I didn't want to die tomorrow and not be Muslim. And I, I truly believe that if I hadn't converted to Islam and died, then I wouldn't be going to Jannah. So I googled, how do you take your Shahada? And I sat there after Isha by myself and did my Shahada in English. And I have never looked back since. It's almost been 10 years now. And um, it's been the most positive change in my life. My mom says I probably would have been dead had I not become Muslim, the way that my life was going. My relationship with my family is so much stronger because Islam has taught me about the importance of family and respecting my parents. Um, and just everything in my life, just the sense of happiness that never goes away, even in sad times, because you know that this life um, will finish and it's not the purpose. You know, the purpose is to live this life as the best person you can so that you can live eternity in the best place, inshallah. I hope um, you don't think I'm crazy because of my story. Um, and I hope it has benefited you in some way. Um, and make sure you like and subscribe so that you can see more of my thoughts and videos that I'll be coming out with soon. Jazakallah khair for tuning in and listening this long. May Allah bless you all and guide those who are not yet guided. Ameen.